Bold predictions are back on Freaky Friday. This is the podcast daily. That is Bill Landis, Jeremy Birmingham. I am Austin Ward. We're so excited for Student Appreciation Day that we're going to make some bold peas about it. And we're going to drill down, baby. Okay. All right. And I think Berm's going first. All right. BP numero uno. What's Jeremiah Smith going to do, Berm? <laughs> is that Jeremiah Smith <laughs> will be the most coveted person to get pictures with and talk with after practice. To get pictures with? Yes, for 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 the, oh, for for the students. students. Oh, okay. I, is I C- forgot about that. Circus. Is CJ Stroud still in town? He, uh, not to my knowledge. Okay. Uh, uh, the, let me. CJ would never miss okay. a student appreciation day. <laughs> let me asterisk <laughs> this up. Of the current roster, got it. Okay. No matter who else is in the building, of the current roster, he will have more people in line to get photos and autographs of Jeremiah Smith than anyone else. I think you're probably right about That's that. It's a good bold P. And yeah. it had nothing to do with the actual practice yeah, itself. Is there anything about practice you want So to... you should just jump ahead yeah. with yours right now and take it from him. Sure. Jeremiah Smith's going to have three <laughs> touchdowns during the practice. Only, How about that? Only three. Only three. Only so. three. Yeah. What do you want, six? Scrimmage touchdowns are hard to come by. Yeah. Well, there's Bruce, a lot of rotation. Is, how many home runs did Babe Ruth promise that dying boy? I don't know. I don't know either. He played against plumbers. Who cares? <laughs> wow. I'm not impressed. <laughs> No, I think I think it's going to be like we're all going to show up wanting to be wowed by Jeremiah Smith, and I think he's going to deliver, um, which I'm really excited about. Like I, again, I'm not I'm not holding back. If no one in here is holding back, I'm not holding back. I think the kid's going to be a stud um, in year one, obviously, um, and I think we're going to see that in in, a, in abundance on Saturday. And I'm really like I'm, I want to see like some trash talking between him and like Denzel Burke, but assuming Denzel Burke gets lined up across from him mm-hmm. and does some stuff. Um, but I I I think. We are going to come in with grand expectations for the young man, and he is going to uh, deliver on them. Yeah. yeah, I think he's going to make a catch that everyone Something crazy. Everyone will start. That ends up on sports. Center. We'll start snap yeah. judgments with it. Yeah. Berm will have some sneaky photo from it, and it'll go viral. I think that's probably going to happen. And then that will continue to make it unfair expectations that are heaped on his shoulders. I think I can't wait to see, like, Caleb Downs is not unproven in college football, but we haven't seen him do anything with the pads on in an Ohio State uniform. I I just have this feeling that he's going to get a lot more spotlight on Saturday than maybe even Jeremiah Smith. Probably going to get an interception in a drill. Maybe it'll be seven on seven. Uh, Maybe it'll be one of those fun scrimmages towards the end when they go 11 on 11. I don't know, but I just expect a lot of him and he's already delivered that while at Alabama so it won't come as a surprise maybe to anybody but I do think it's going to be enjoyable to watch him do that at Ohio State the impact the way that people are talking about Caleb Downs on this roster already is like kind of nuts a that he's here and b that he's living up to all American type expectations which he should he's already earned that and he's already played um, at a high level for a national title contender but I think he's going to be the player on defense that we talked the most about on Saturday. Probably. Yep. He's really good. Uh, I don't like these sort of events and this sort of bold prediction because we have no idea who's actually going <laughs> to participate. And so therefore making individual performance based BPs is a bit of Burn. a, what is, is a bit of, I mean, that's not, wow. actually, you know what? That's no different than during the regular season where we <laughs> never have any idea <laughs> no, no, who's no, actually going to play. Gonna play. Yeah. Um, They're not so, going to give you an availability so hell, report before we get dive here. In. Austin Mack's going to have three touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, I think that this is a day when, CFL MVP. when people are going to, he's now with the Atlanta Falcons. Um, he signed with them this off season. The I'm Canada not, of the Southeast. But he's I'm, still, not, he's still I'm not taking away. Yeah. You don't lose your previous, the comp. That'd be kind of wild. If you like, if you're Science Falcons, like, give us that trophy. <laughs> we, would, they, we would like the Great Cup. Yeah, please. they just smash it and like, get that That's out in the past. Um, we're not sure how the rotation is going to be at quarterback. And that's, I think, the biggest thing. So mm-hmm. uh, I, I would have, my bold prediction is that people are going to be talking more about Julian Sain than they are any other quarterback. Now, we obviously encourage people to be fully entertained and educated uh, on the Ohio State football beat. So go to other webs other YouTube pages after you watch ours and then and then come back and, and fact check me. Was Julian saying the most talked about quarterback uh around the Buckeye entertainment sphere? That's what I that's my <laughs> prediction. Yeah, like that. that he will be the entertainment sphere. Yeah, I think you, I think you probably shop will. around. He says. I, I mean, I I think people don't shop should, around. Watch I think this. people should consume everyone's content. <laughs> I don't watch first. this. There's only so many hours in a day, Burn. We need them it's here a Saturday. on the There's podcast. There's 30 hours on Saturdays. Everyone knows it. If you're not watching this right now, watch it. <laughs> 
Don't ever leave, okay? We have other videos. Are you fully caught up? You person watching this, you better watch this. America, if you haven't watched every video on the podcast, <sighs> don't don't leave until you do. That's right. Watch Only all. then can you take Berm's I can't advice. believe that I'm being just crapped on for being a realist. People, watch everyone. I want okay? everyone, I want everyone, everyone in this like building. A click farm in Bangladesh. Just <laughs> go through every, each video. Everyone in this building is working watch. super hard, and they deserve your support just as much as we do. At least 10 <clears throat> seconds, and then you can click out. Yeah, let me just get them to click. I have a bold P that really said quarterbacks. Let's hear I, it. I think we're only going to see Will Howard and Devin Brown play with the ones. Um, I like that. I don't know. And Ryan Day like kind of laid that out at the beginning of spring. Like, we'll just kind of roll guys through, and then we'll start to pare it down as we get closer to the end. You have this Saturday. You have the following Saturday. Then you have the spring game. Like, I, this feels like the time that maybe you start to pare it down. Maybe, maybe it's after this Saturday. You start to do that. But I think also because we're going to be in here, um, maybe they'll just want to present that to us as like, these are our two guys we're trying to figure out. Yeah, stop all the other talk. Who's going to be the starting quarterback? And I I think that I think we will not see. Maybe we'll see Lincoln, maybe. But I I, I think we won't see Lincoln, Air, or Julian take any reps with like whatever the version of the one offense is on Saturday, depending on who's practicing and who's not. I'm going to let history be my guide here. Student, student Appreciation Day last year. They had so many red zone drills where both Kyle McCord and Devin Brown were given opportunities to go run the football and make plays with their legs. And we talked a lot about both of their abilities to do that. Uh, the celebrations that they made after they scored or, or frustration when they didn't. There was a questionable call down at the goal line, I believe, on one Devin Brown run. So he did not get the score. But if that's the case, and I also believe that Chip Kelly is pushing more of a quarterback run threat into this offense, which means that I think Will Howard, Devin Brown, and Lincoln Keenholz are going to combine for four rushing touchdowns in the Student Appreciation Day scrimmage. I think yeah. all that work is going to come. You see, some, like, they don't generally do a whole bunch of drive the full length of the field. It's like 40 and in. They wind up with a lot more scoring opportunities. And testing things on the ground at this midpoint, uh, both offensively and defensively, offensive line, linebackers making tackles. I think that's going to be a big emphasis, and I think you're going to see a lot of quarterback run. Hmm. Drive. Drive on down the field. Not my, the full way. My my predictions here are obviously a little bit more amorphous than, y- than y'all's are. Uh, I am going to make a bold prediction that there will be a moment on Saturday's uh, scrimmage where Brandon Ennis and Jermaine Matthews Nearly come to blows. <laughs> a potential yeah. fisticuffs moment okay. between Ennis and Matthews, who are two of the finest crap talkers <laughs> anywhere in the country and both extremely competitive. And I think that there's going to be a moment uh, because when the people get in here and there's crowd watching, the juice level goes up just a skosh. Uh, and by just a skosh, I mean a lot. <laughs> and guys like Brandon Ennis who thrive on that sort of fuel and Jermaine Matthews, who is just really, really great at getting people's eyes on him when he's on the field. Uh, I, I just, that's my. I don't like when I feel like Berm is trying to force something to happen. And then he's going to leave. Fight, fight, he's going to leave here yeah. and he's going to text Ennis and Jermaine Matthews both. I'm like, can you guys pretend like you're going to fight? This, and is then, not a, this is not a dab situation. I'm not trying I, to make, I'm not trying to make like, fetch happen here. It feels like a dab situation. I'm not it trying to make fetch happen. It feels like. Chip Kelly is going to be I still got to get Chip Kelly to twerk. <laughs> that is priority one. I want to lay that down. You wanna, you wanna, here's before, what's going to happen. I, I don't Jermaine have, and Brandon Innes are going to like throw their helmet on the ground, and then Chip <laughs> Kelly's going to walk over. <laughs> we have not had enough of an opportunity to like connect with old Chip Kelly for me to oh, okay. try to... You Probably know. not. And I don't think there's any level of connection imprint. you'll ever get to. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make you Maybe able not. to imprint that. Maybe not. It's a man can have, dream. It's good to have goals. Yeah, man can dream. My dad always said, if you're going to dream, dream in color. That's right. I don't. Might be better black and white. Chip Kelly twerking. I don't know. We'll see. A little sepia tone. Sepia. Yeah. yeah. Sepia is nice. Mm. Yeah. Some some auburn in there. Yeah. With a little slow mo. <laughs> just a. Or just like completely blacked out. Blacked out. Blurred out. Yeah. Sarah McLaughlin playing in yeah. the background. Sepia. <laughs> Slowed down. 
Oh, what an image. Twerk, okay. chip, twerk. <laughs> For anybody who's wondering why we're talking about that, I accidentally said twerk one time when, <laughs> instead of tweak when talking about but, Chip Kelly. Well, yeah, everyone who's watching this has watched that's every That's why episode. they watch all of the episodes right. and they don't ever click or leave yeah, until just, they've done the our inside jokes. Newbies. Our inside jokes are actually probably pretty annoying to yeah, people. Just for any newbies. That's all right. Um, is it my turn to pick another one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to watch the offensive line, obviously, uh, very closely. Um, and like wondering who might surprise a little bit. Uh, it's hard to in these settings. Like it's not the best vantage point, I guess, to really judge that. But um, maybe go off the radar a little bit for someone who I think might perform pretty well and turn some heads. Maybe George Fitzpatrick mm. at tackle, um, who is like a, a player who, uh, to me anyway, it seems like they really like the path that he's on with his development. And for me, that was always going to take probably three years, if not like three and a half ish years, given where he was physically coming in here, given. He was like a multi-sport athlete and not like solely focused on playing offensive line when he got here. But he also had athleticism because of that. And now he's got the size to go with it. And it's not so much that like he's going to throw himself into the starting tackle conversation. But I think we might see him get a decent amount of work in the scrimmage, whether that's a left tackle or right tackle. And, And I think he might handle things quite well and show us that maybe he's ready to certainly be in the too deep. And I don't know, maybe by summer, I honestly like throw himself. Not not into a position battle, but at least make you feel really good about, or, or better anyway, about the depth at the tackle position. Because I, I do think he's got a, a future here. I'm not, it's not a guy that I write off because he's three years into his career and hasn't really broken through yet. That's a great point. Uh, I feel like these, we never know for sure if it's always going to be ones versus ones, good on good, scramble up one, ver- one versus twos. They don't give us the script ahead of time. And I haven't actually. Oh, well, can you tell me, is it going to be ones versus twos? Because if it is, I think... Uh, Arvell Reese and Sonny Styles are going to create a lot of problems for Ohio State's Ooh. backup offensive linemen on the field together. Yeah, Ooh. I think they're. I think <laughs> I, I can't can't shake it. I'm dreaming in color, bright bright colors. And I, there's a lot of red in this in this uh, dream I'm having. It's blood. <laughs> it's blood. There's blood. a lot of violence. You might want to get that checked out in that picture. Um, this the defensive staff has talked about primarily working on fundamentals and technique and hour. Oh, it's too early to put in stuff like the jack position or blitz a ton. Um, but you are getting to the point of camp where you have to do some of that. And it's to the benefit of the offense as well that they start to see different looks and are not just lining up against base uh, base schemes and base approaches. And, and uh, if that means more blitzes, which I, if I remember last year correctly, we did start to see more of that. Uh, not that Ohio State's defensive line had to do that to win pretty much every drill. You're going to see C.J. Hicks, Sonny Styles, Arvell Reese all blitzing from time to time, or I expect that we will. And I, I, I could include C.J. in that. I was trying to talk about maybe like a second wave where Sonny, on early in those early first couple practice windows that we saw, he was lined up with Arvell Reese, and that's a pretty terrifying group of athletes. Yeah. I do appreciate the student appreciation type days because guys like Arvell Reese, who the average fan doesn't really know about yet. I mean, we I've obviously talked about him a lot in the last few weeks, but the people that have are just casual watchers and go to the games and watch the games and see who's on the front page are going to see Arvell Reese and be like, oh my gosh, that dude is terrifying. Yeah. And uh, I, I think... It, you know, you're saying if they go one versus twos, I'm saying if they well, go, if they go twos versus twos, it's even worse. Yeah, because he, that's when that's when the ex, that's when people get this idea that like, oh my gosh, this guy should be the starter because he's decimating the third team yeah. o- offensive line. So 100%. I'm hoping that they're against the ones because otherwise the the conversation <laughs> about Sonny and Arvell might be growing beyond the reasonable scope if that's the case. <laughs> that would be incredibly unfair i think <laughs> for the twos if those guys have to go against that group but maybe they will that is the level of depth that ohio state has on defense like that's the reality you so have fun you have to practice against somebody it's a learning experience yeah if you're you, on the other end of it that's probably not fun but not gonna be fun yeah. but what will be is getting into the woody hayes athletic center on saturday morning for student appreciation day cannot wait to have some live football again to talk about it's been a long couple of weeks without it Uh, Thanks for bearing with us to get to this point. We're going to have some snap judgments on Saturday, and then we'll be talking about things that we actually saw again from the Buckeyes next week on the Podcast Daily. That is Bill Landis and Jeremy Birmingham. I am Austin Ward. Have a great weekend, but we'll talk to you on Saturday. See you.